Thank you for all for coming. Uh, um, well, my paper, as you, you can see, I, I have the same issue that Mathia just referred to. Uh, the more you think about public spaces, the less you can really catch what it is when you are thinking about uh, Iron Age Europe. So, uh, as you could see, I quite a little bit avoided uh, the notion of public space directly on the title to refer to uh, space time and interaction. Will be, uh, I will speak about uh, Western uh, Iron Age Europe. It won't be a synthesis about everything that is to be found in such a wide, uh, wide space, obviously. Rather, a proposal, proposal of uh, some ideas uh, that come uh, from my own experience. Uh, so, where and when, uh, I will. Uh, find examples uh, along uh, mainly the Iberian Peninsula and uh, what is now the territory of France, uh, except for the uh, Atlantic area, which uh, is quite a specific one and uh, for which I lack uh, direct experience. Uh, the time uh, span will be between 800 BC and 450 BC, more or less, around uh, both, both dates, uh, which is um, a time uh, characterized for, by some specificities from an, an archaeological point of view. A few agglomerations uh, are extensively, extensively explored for this period, uh, especially if you focus on such a wide uh, territory. Uh, and we have uh, very strong differences into the dynamics of research. And uh, recently, for example, the northern part of the territory I will be for the uh, West Ashtat region. Uh, and the knowledge we had about it and about the morphology of the agglomeration is, was totally renewed, which means that obviously we are still uh, on a moving ground. Well, the question of public spaces, uh, Mathieu already addressed them. What is public space? Uh, this is obviously something, uh, a notion, uh, strongly linked to our own uh, experience. I think one good definition would be that uh, it is everything owned, accessible to, and or managed, ma managed by the communities as a whole or by its representatives. Here, for example, I think we can say that we are in a public space because it's owned by the uh, community, funded by it, but not everyone can enter it. So it's uh, a very um, a very fluid uh, notion. Uh, as for um, public spaces in the archaeological record, I think we, we can uh, identify them in some very specific contexts, and for ancient times, for example, Roman Forum, the Athenian Acropolis, or the Athenian Agora, we, we, we provide good examples of public spaces, very well identified within the urban fabric. Why are they so uh, easy to identify? Because they are bound, they are separated from the rest of the city. They are, uh, they are ideas are really strongly, uh, their extension is strongly limited. It is also because it's uh, some uh, institutions, some rules, some laws only apply to such spaces and are uh, controlled and uh, enforced by magistrates, especially uh, devoted to uh, the regulation of such spaces. So, uh, if we can see them so clearly, because they are part of the materiality of political, <coughs> economic, or religious, or at whatever you want, uh, institutions. But formal institutions, for institutions, strong institutions that survive from one generation to another, uh, and that are uh, generally enforced by written, written or law or by uh, strong tradition. Now, the archaeological record, not as fully on the reality of how society works, but uh, in the archaeological record, I see we can say that this feature appear in Greece and in Italy uh, during the uh, late archaic period, the uh, late 7th, 6th century BC, uh, in Athens, with the, uh, the monumentalization of the Acropolis, uh, with the uh, uh, agora that take uh, uh, its shape, or here in Smyrna where well, the Agora square, a square can be seen there. One can notice, however, that Megara and Lea are founded, if I don't, if I don't make a mistake, uh, on the first half of the 7th century. 
there is already an empty space where the Agora will be uh, further on. Spoiler alert, such features are, in my opinion, uh, unknown, uh, are almost totally absent from early Iron Age Western European urbanism. We do not have such bounded spaces, uh, which are obviously, and uh, which we can infer from the morphology, that they were uh, completely owned and uh, managed by the world community. Moreover, uh, the few clues we had about what happened uh, inside the public sphere during the uh, late Bronze Age, for example, the few clues we had, the big orbs that were visibly uh, constituted through uh, the successive depositions, so presumably seasonal gathering and seasonal offering, these uh, laid orbs, uh, seem to, these large hoarding places, rather, seem to have been abandoned. However, early Iron Age communities had to uh, rely on uh, decision-making processes. They traded. Uh, they had probably also conflict regulation processes. So they had a uh, community life that has to take place in some place. Um, ritual were performed, etc. The issue is to identify where did it Happen. And we will see that this issue is deeply linked with another one, is the issue of its temporality, the, the time sequence of uh, such, uh, such actions. <laughs> well, first question I would like to ask is where people can engage with each other, because it's first step on uh, every uh, uh, public life or community life uh, we have to, uh, to look for. And uh, I will uh, use the example of the uh, excavation I am currently uh, making in uh, southern France, in Malieu, uh, near Béziers, in uh, the Occitanie region. region excuse me. Now, what spaces can be deemed as the, uh, allowing community, uh, allowing it, uh, social interaction or belonging or being made, uh, managed by the community? Basically, from 800 onward, the rampart which is presumably built by people belonging to the world community. Uh, and uh, as Mathieu said, it gives also time and space for interaction during the time it's good. Um, so we have streets and open spaces uh, all over the place that allow also for communication, for uh, informal or more formal uh, social interaction. And uh, we have uh, something that appears with the appearance of the rampart. We have gates that will, hear, and ears that will obviously uh, concentrate uh, human circulation and therefore uh, enhance the possibility for uh, human interaction in these, uh, in these sectors. But we have also a lot of, when we are dealing with buildings, with build structure, they are all, we can all interpret them as houses. They are only domestic, uh, domestic uh, buildings. So we can assume, I think, that the domestic sphere is also uh, um, an important sphere for uh, social interaction. Um, domestic architecture, in my view, reflects social complexity. We are building a very different size and structure, and we have one here, one compound that uh, smashes everything around by its uh, superficie and its, um, its uh, mass, I would say. Uh, you can have here a small picture comparing the size of this central compound with uh, another house that was uh, excavated nearby. We assume that it is uh, some kind of elite compound, and uh, if it is, we can think that uh, we can interpret some, uh, some space by the morphology of its ground, also by uh, its relation with uh, the outer spaces as a re reception area. Yeah. This is the kind of feature that used to appear in a domestic, uh, elite domestic building all throughout the Mediterranean. Put here uh, an example from uh, Lescandi, Tundo. Uh, the scale of the two plan is the same, and as you can see, uh, the reception spaces are uh, quite uh, similar size. Uh,
So, interaction will happen, I think, in uh, different contexts. And these different contexts uh, are related to different spaces. At the level of a community, at the level of society, uh, two spheres, what are what I will call spheres of interaction, but not to talk about public space, because one cannot say that the inner part of a private house is a public space. No, it's a space for social interaction, but not a, um, a public space. So we can uh, isolate two spheres of interaction, one that I will call communitarian, uh, with gates, with open spaces, uh, the robot with bar barely described as somehow uh, some place for interaction, so, so I won't use this term to describe it. And we have another sphere of interaction embedded, embedded in the elite space. <coughs> Both seem to be quite characteristic to all Western early Iron Age communities. And I will try to go uh, quickly through it. Uh, I think it's uh, something Manuel knows very well. So we have uh, very much, very much other instances of elite houses and palaces of place of, of social interaction. I put here a picture of the most spectacular, which is a uh, more or less one place uh, near the aristocratic tomb of Felix, with a proposal of reconstruction here. The plan of the house of my view is more or less of the same size. Uh, it's not that different, but it's not that similar neither because it will more or less fit in uh, just this part of the of the big uh, of the big um, uh, view of the big big uh, palace. The communitarian area can also be identified all throughout uh, Iron Age Europe because even if in the case of what was deemed, there was what was called before uh, principally, principally sites, what we know that uh, now there are something more, uh, much more like uh, urban settlements, we have uh, evidence for uh, places for social engagement with uh, craft work. Uh, um, <laughs> Artisanal uh, part of the uh, part of the city uh, devoted to, uh, to artisanal activities with streets, with uh, circulation places, etc. So uh, these two uh, spheres of interaction seem to exist anywhere, and when looking at them, we cannot limit ourselves to what is inside uh, agglomeration. Uh, we can uh, find them. Also in the countryside, like in uh, like this to the exa example of what uh, can be deemed as elite residences in Cancho Rano or in uh, El Silas. <coughs> and we, it's not only for elites, uh, elites with interaction that we do not have to look uh, outside of the agglomeration. It's also and it was well emphasized by Mattia uh, for uh, community interaction because of the work in the field, the agrarian work, for example, or collaborative works like a mound building or uh, road making uh, provide also uh, a very strong space for, uh, for interaction. Uh, and you can see, for example, one cyclic, one seasonal uh, collaborative work that will give many opportunities for, uh, for social interaction the uh, harvesting of uh, cereals. We do not have even to look at interaction forcefully in what we are because of the world of the living. We can go uh, as far as to propose that necropolises uh, as open spaces related with uh, also the community or to the elite or even to corporate groups can be placed for interaction. Uh, during the funeral and obviously after the So, in conclusion, I think that we have, can have the idea uh, rather clear that the relation of community life to space is a fluid one. Uh, it's a one that barely uh, marks the uh, urbanism. The, uh, Elite and the community are two spheres, excuse me, to, uh, went in French, two spheres, or two spheres that appear clearly in the archaeological record. But other, we, 
it's only the two extremity of, uh, of wide range of possibility. Other corporate groups have probably also played a role into the construction of the community life and into the decision making processes. Intensity of polarization between elite and communitarian uh, sites was very different from one region to another and from one time to another, so it's impossible to provide synthesis uh, encompassing uh, all the different situations. Interacting on each one of these contexts, uh, elite or community or even corporate, I suppose it's not only to belong to one group or another, I suppose this also to possess its convention, language, body language, um, social convention, etc. The most important of this convention, I should have put it in plural, is in my opinion temporality. Uh, when can you meet people? Because if you want to meet people, you don't need only to, uh, to have a space, you also need to, to have a time, a time for interaction. If people have to meet, so they do not only need a place for that, but also have to agree on a specific time. Seasonal laboratory work, market, ritual celebration provided a cyclical time sequence for interaction and mutual engagement, while interpersonal agreement on meeting time was probably more limited socially, limited to the elite uh, interpersonal networks. <coughs> Community life since, since then, to, to, therefore to have a, had a fluid relation with space. Uh, my guess is that feeling, this feeling comes from the fact that it didn't have uh, a so much fluid relation with time. The relation with time was much stronger. Uh, people knew exactly when and where social interaction was possible, but it was possible in many different places. Thanks. Thank you so much for your attention.